Hey yo, and what is up, gang? Thank you for checking out Sledgehammer TV tonight. The first round of the May Young Classic comes to an end with four matchups to determine which of the eight final competitors in this year's May Young Classic advances to the second round, and we are going to talk about it right now. My name is Nick Nightmare, and you're watching the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show's May Young Classic Episode 4 Review. Let's do it. Wrestling fans, thank you so much for joining me. You know, this show for me was a 50-50 show. I don't know. There was just something about episode four of the Mae Young Classic that just seemed a little bit off to me. Like I said, four matchups remaining in the first round featuring eight of the remaining competitors, two of which highly anticipated debuts we've seen tonight. And then there were two matchups that I wish I didn't see tonight. We're going to go over all of that right now. This show kicked off with Rachel Evers versus Hiroyo Matsumoto. And I think everybody out there has hyped up Hiroyo Matsumoto so much that there was no way she was going to deliver on the expectations that my mind has placed upon her. I am easily far more impressed by Mako Satsumura and by the night's conclusion on this episode, I would be absolutely floored by what we got to see from an Io Shirai. Matsumoto don't mean much to me right now. And I'm not I'm gonna reserve my harsh criticisms and my my hammering down of her with judgment until we see a little bit more of her. I've never seen her before. This was her first outing, and in this matchup with Rachel Evers, I came out a lot more impressed with Rachel Evers' performance in this matchup than I was with Matsumoto. I look at her and I see Asuka. I see exactly what Asuka was when she came to NXT, her whole entire NXT title reign. That looks to me like a carbon copy of what we are seeing from Matsumoto. Nothing special yet. What did she do really that was impressive outside of how she finished this matchup tonight? Nothing. Rachel Evers, however, I am so proud to see her progression in the ring, how much she has come along since last year's Mae Young Classic. Rachel Evers did a fantastic job of making Matsumoto look as good as she possibly could. This was a toe-to-toe -to -toe contest with these two girls. It was a good match. Don't get me wrong, this was a good match. It was a hard-fought contest between two extremely tough-as-nails broads, and this was a strong style type of a matchup, a knockdown, drag out fight between these two girls. And it was tough and it was intense, but Matsumoto wins with a move that they're calling the rock drop, which is pretty much just an exploder suplex. It was beautiful to see. She executed it very well. It looked like it hurt like hell. And she would get the win with that maneuver and advance to the second round. And she will be fighting Tony Storm. There's a storm waiting for Matsumoto in her near future. And it'll be interesting to see what goes down with two pretty hard-hitting girls going at it in the second round with Storm and Matsumoto. I feel bad for Rachel Evers. She's uh, one of these girls that were just there to put over the new incoming person. But she did a fantastic job in doing so. And one thing to note, Rachel Evers had her foot underneath the ropes for the three count. I'm just throwing it out there. The referee was not in position to see it, but Rachel Evers technically did not lose that match. Just a technicality. They did not mention it. On the broadcast, they didn't make light of it later on, and I'm sure it will not come to light at all unless there is some sort of a plan to see Rachel Evers and Matsumoto in NXT at some point down the road. But that was it about this match. The girls both shown great toughness in this matchup. It was a good match to kick off the show. I just was expecting a whole lot more. You're calling her Lady Godzilla and Lady Destroyer, and all I saw was her yelling and screaming around the ring. 
and throwing some pretty impressive strikes here and there, but nothing much to make her stand out over, like I said, Satamura and Shirai, who just absolutely blew me away. Match number two on this night would be Jesse Elevan and Tay Nara Conti. I did not like this match. And it's not just because I'm not a fan of Tainara Conti. I do not like her in-ring style. She is not good. She is, in fact, a little bit botchy. She can't even deliver a simple kick to the midsection without making it look absolutely like an uncoordinated mess. I don't care how pretty you are if you can't wrestle. I make that point known every Monday and Tuesday to you guys. It doesn't matter. If you can't wrestle, you can't wrestle. And I feel like Tainara's lack of experience or whatever it is that she's lacking was shining very clearly in this matchup as they did not even give Jesse Elibin anything at all to shine. Not one moment in this matchup did this girl receive any nice series of maneuvers. She did a couple of things that we have seen everybody else do but nothing to make Elibin stand out. No reason for her to have been even put in this Mae Young Classic if that's the kind of things that she was bringing to the table. She has like an A.J. Lee kind of vibe going to her, although she's not as small as A.J. Lee, but she's just got like that look to her, and I thought we were going to see something special, at least out of her, but this was just nothing impressive. Nothing impressive at all from either one of these women. Maybe my least favorite match of the tournament out of the first round so far. Conti wins with a judo flipping sidewalk slam and moves on to face Lacey Lane in the second round later on. Like I said, Elibin was just absolutely squashed here. She was put into this match to have her fingers stretched. And you guys, if you've been watching me for an extended period of time, you know that as much as I enjoy a guy like Pete Dunn, the NXT UK champion. I don't enjoy finger manipulation maneuvers. It just is very boring to me. Sitting there watching somebody play with somebody else's fingers is not professional wrestling to me, and it's not impressive to me. I don't care if you're Pete Dunn or Zack Sabre Jr. or Tainara Conti. I don't care for that style. I don't see anything appealing about anything that they brought into this matchup. Tainara Conti, like I said, moves on. And I was surprised by that as well. I would have much rather Jesse Elibin move on so I could have at least seen her against somebody worth a damn. Maybe the girl can actually put on a great match if you give her somebody to put on a great match with. Obviously, I did not enjoy this match. I also did not enjoy the match that would follow. Match number three would be Nicole Matthews versus Isla Dawn. This was a sloppy as hell, absolute embarrassment for the Mae Young Classic. There were times in this matchup where it seemed as if neither girl knew what the hell to do. Like they forgot their spots. And this match came down to a kick fest. It was just kicks and chops and elbow strikes. One after the other after the other. It also seemed like there was miscommunication going on between the girls. Or as maybe there was real life push and pull going on. As like Isla Dawn looked like she was trying to take control of this match on multiple occasions. Only to be shot down by Nicole Matthews very physically and very clear to see. If you missed any of that weirdness, go back and take a look. You will notice... There is no chemistry, there is like no communication, and there's a a clear struggle for who is supposed to be the dominating female in this matchup. I'm not a big fan of Isla Dawn, especially coming out of this matchup as well. A lot of poor timing, she just seemed absolutely lost in this matchup. And Nicole Matthews with some really unflattering ring gear, my god, this girl looked terrible. You're on a WWE network show for millions around the world to watch, probably your biggest moment of your life, your biggest exposure, the most you've ever had people's eyes on you, ever. And you can't put together an outfit that at least makes you look good. 
My God. I'm not going to get into the specifics just to not be disrespectful. But if you watched it, you know what I'm talking about. It was hanging out there like a sack of shit. And it was just not very appealing to look at. Her pants seemed to be very loose fitting. She was pulling her pants up the whole night long just like we seen last week. And I actually gave them a pass on that one. Mia Yim pulling up her pants a hundred times. I didn't bring it to light on my review. But I once again find myself watching a match where this girl is wearing pants that are way too big for her. And they're too tight at the same time. They're too small and too big and too tight all at once. Terrible look. Terrible match. This was boring as hell. I did not like this match. Matthews taps out Isla Dawn with a lion tamer. It's been a while since we've seen anything like that. And Matthews will move on to take on fan favorite Tegan Knox in the upcoming second round. And we are going to wind this thing down with the final match of the night, which, thank God, took place because it saved the whole entire episode. And they, they, these two girls might be my absolute two new favorite women in all of professional wrestling. Zia Brookside took on Io Shirai. Zia Brookside is a star in the making. Her look is fantastic. That pastel rainbow thing going on. Her outfit looked very, very good. She was very, very nervous. You could see it in her eyes and in her body language. And why wouldn't she be when she's going in there against one of the most feared competitors in all of the world? Plus, she had her dad sitting at ringside which had to be tough on both of them because this was apparently the first time Robbie Brookside has ever gotten to see his daughter Zia in the ring and now he's got to see her go against this absolute fantastic female Io Shirai. The one word that I can think of to describe Io Shirai is explosive. The girl is explosive. Her quickness is unmatched and it comes out of nowhere. They could be standing still and then she could twirl you up like a tornado. Next thing you know, you're in the middle of the air and then you're down on the floor and then Ayo Shirai is on top of you, smiling, happily beating the shit out of you with a shit-eating grin the whole time because she knows she's in control and she knows that she's going to win this matchup. A tremendous confidence in her. Io Shirai, as well as in Zia Brookside, she came out as soon as the bell rang, house on fire, just starting beating down on Io Shirai, but it would not last long. Zia Brookside brought the fight to Io Shirai every which way she could, but all it took in the end was a European uppercut that would be followed by a double knee meteora strike in the corner, following it with a devastating, absolutely picture-perfect, beautiful moonsault. But she came down on Zia Brookside very, very viciously. It seemed as if her knees came across the sternum of Zia Brookside, not really getting the amount of distance she needed to execute that moonsault 100% cleanly. However, it was 1,000% better than any moonsault on Charlotte Flair's best day. This girl absolutely impressed me. Zia Brookside, again in this match, was great. She was clearly the underdog, but she had actually caught Shirai quite a few times. But Io was just so dominant that Brookside just couldn't find a chance to even get into a pinning predicament until the one that came in the end that she would fall victim to Io Shirai, who will now go on to face Zeuxis in the second round. And that should be a very, very interesting matchup, a huge clashing of styles, as we have a Latin American-based Zeuxis going against this Far East firehouse, Io Shirai, an absolutely great final match to close out the first round and, like I said, save episode four altogether because with aside from the first match being as good as it was, there was nothing on this show that wowed me until this last match. And even Zia Brookside in defeat coming out on top. She is 19 years old. 
And if she can sell in the ring and she can perform at that level and make somebody like Io Shirai look as fantastic as she looked in that match tonight, the, the sky is the limit for Zia Brookside. She is fucking beautiful. She is fucking talented. And I can't wait to see more of her. Whether it's in NXT UK or NXT, it's fine with me. Just get this girl going because she has got the makings of a superstar. It's everything you need. She's got a fantastic look. She's got skill in the ring. She could sell. She can go. And I like it. I like what I've seen with this last match. Round two is going to begin next Wednesday night with episode five dropping on the WWE Network at 9 p.m. Eastern time as it is here always in New York City. And I'm looking forward to it. The second round is going to be full of fantastic matchups and first time evers and who is going to move on in the second round as we are starting to gear up for the quarterfinals it's going to be a happening as the may young classic always is they're not always going to be winners there are guaranteed to be duds and not everybody goes out there you know on all cylinders every night sometimes you go out there and you have a bad night maybe that's the case with Matsumoto. Maybe that's the case with Nicole Matthews. Maybe that's the case with who was the other girl? Damn it. You gotta get my notes down. Oh, Tane Araconti. That's how inconsequential she is. I can't even remember her and I don't want to remember her, but we are going to have to see her again in the second round. Hopefully she don't go too much further and we don't really even have to see her too much on NXT because even her song, it's just very annoying. I ain't gonna be like me. I don't care. I don't want to see it. Thank you guys so much for being here with me tonight on this review of the Mae Young Classic episode for 2018 edition. This is, like I said, been a 50-50 show, but the rest of this tournament, I'm sure, is going to start picking up the pace as we are cleaning out. I don't want to say the trash. We are cleaning out the field, and we are leaving the strongest of the competitors, and I can't wait to get everything going. My name is Nick Nightmare. This is my trusty team, Thor the Sledgehammer, the official Sledgehammer of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show and the Wrestling God of Thunder, his tag team partner and the world heavyweight champion of all the microphones in all the world, Mr. Blue the Snowball Microphone. We are so happy to be with you guys here again to talk about the Mae Young Classic. Let me know in the comments section below what your favorite matchup was on this night. Let me know if you agree with me about how the WWE used Hiroyo Matsumoto tonight, how they used most of the girls tonight, and whether you want to see anybody who lost have moved on instead of who we've seen get the victories tonight to finish out the first round of the Mae Young Classic. And also, don't forget, we had an all-new subscription box showdown drop earlier today. I need your guys' help now more than ever because this was the closest unboxing battle I have ever had. I know I said that last month, but these two boxes are definitely picking up their game more and more each month, and this battle is even better than the last. So go check it out. Make sure you leave your vote to help me decide who this month of September's champion will be for the subscription box showdown, that wrestling club or wrestle crate. It's there for you to check out and it's a whole lot of fun. And I definitely suggest you do so. And then when you're done with that, if you missed all of my reviews for SmackDown Live or the absolute bashing of Monday Night Raw with my Brie Bella rant included, everything is live on this channel right now go back and watch it and no matter what you're watching whether it's this video or every other single video that i have on my playlists make sure you hit that thumbs up and let me know that you enjoyed today's show so that you will keep coming back for more and i will keep giving you guys quality content because that's what we do here at the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. The best way to make sure you don't miss out on anything else we do this weekend. As we got House of Glory coming up again next weekend. It's right on our asses already. And we're going to be on top of it. And we are getting ready to start shitting all over the Super Showdown. And everything else that WWE wants to give us. Uh, give us. Not give us. I don't know what the hell that was. Give us to watch. And I hope to see each and every one of you guys here with me on the channel the best way to not miss it is to be subscribed we are almost at that 1k mark as we get moving 
to be official once again here on YouTube. And all it takes is an awesome wrestling fan like you who enjoyed my show here today to bash that subscribe button, then take your invisible sledgehammers at home and hit that notification bell so that every time I drop an awesome video, you will be notified immediately and then you can get your eyeballs on it as soon as humanly possible. If you are listening to us on iTunes, Podbean, or Stitcher, Radio, or Spotify, make sure you come check out all the fun and games we have on the YouTube channel, which is the official home of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, and that is Sledgehammer TV. That, my friends, is going to do it, and we are out of here, and we will see you next time right here on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. Have a good night.